So, the most famous event in the history of evolution is probably the first step that our ancestors took out of the water and onto dry land. It's, in a way, the biological equivalent of Neil Armstrong stepping onto the moon. It's one giant leap for life on Earth. And it really was an amazing accomplishment, but it also doesn't tell the whole story of evolution. So, if we go back to the point where our ancestors had eyes, a mouth, a spinal cord, and not a lot else, which honestly is skipping a lot, I'm going to walk through the steps of how we got out of the water. So first we needed to develop proper rigid bones that would be able to support our bodies out of the water. And then we developed sort of fleshy, muscular pectoral fins that would eventually become our forelimbs. We of course needed to develop lungs that would be able to extract oxygen from the air where our gills would be useless. And we needed four proper limbs so we could move about speedily on the land. And then finally, we developed proper waterproof eggs that could sit on a nest or on a beach without drying out, which cut our final tether to the oceans. So, after millions of years of evolution, after countless births and deaths, our ancestors finally left the ocean, and some of them went on to become us. Some of them became cats or dogs or parrots or dinosaurs or woolly mammoths, and some of them went right back in the ocean. Some of whales and dolphins are the clearest examples of animals that left the water and went right back in, but they're not the only ones. There's turtles, there's manatees, there's seals, there's plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, there's sea snakes, all of them took millions of years to leave the ocean, turned around, went back into the ocean, and started <laughs> pretending to be fish. So, why go to all this effort to leave the ocean just to go back in again? The answer is something I think most people know, but I think most people could use a reminder of, which is that evolution doesn't have a plan. All these things came about because they were good ideas at the time, not because they were necessary to leave the water, and not because they were necessary to make us. When we developed rigid bones, it's because bone is a good solid material to build a skeleton out of. And modern amphibians have four legs, which they make perfectly good use of. They have lungs, but many of them still live lives almost entirely underwater. If you Google the word evolution, the first thing that comes up, the first picture that comes up, is one of those charts with the monkeys and the apes and the people all stood in a line and all pointed in the same direction. And those charts are accurate, but they're also misleading because evolution isn't pointed anywhere. It can never think any further ahead than the next batch of babies. And that's why sometimes it's a good idea to leave the ocean and sometimes it's a good idea to get back in which is why life has been playing hopscotch with the shoreline for millions of years. That's, that's it. That's good.